Hello, I'm Lorna and welcome back to my channel Thread and Yarn. It's mostly about sewing and knitting, quilting, natural dyeing, all that cosy goodness. Today is just a little video about me jazzing up some trousers or pants that I made recently. These are Pomona pants. They're patterned by Anna Allen. I really like her patterns and I've made Pomona pants quite a few times. And I made this linen pair recently for summer. Um, so they're quite cool and comfortable to wear. I love an elasticated waistband. <laughs> they're sort of a relaxed fit and they've got pockets on the back. Now, I managed to sew my pocket on the wrong side, at least for me being right-handed. I like to put my phone or something in my back right pocket, but I sewed it on to the back left. I didn't want to unpick it because I didn't want stitch marks and I was quite happy with how, how neatly I did it. And I was, I've kind of run out of this fabric now in, in a sort of amount that's big enough to do this pocket. So I thought, why not make a sort of scrappy quilty pocket? I think it'd be fun. Um, I was actually looking at this one that I did a couple years ago uh, and I thought I might recreate something similar to that. So I am gonna have a look through my scrappy fabric stash and I'm gonna do just a quick little quilted pocket for the other side. I think it'll be a cool little feature. Um, hopefully it won't sort of affect what I can wear it with, I think. It's just a little, a little tiny feature. So it's just going to be a quick little sew along. So yeah, join me if you fancy a little sew along video. And while I sort of transform these fairly, well, I, I like them. I was going to say boring. They're not boring. <laughs> they're, they're nice. I like them. But I'm going to jazz them up a little bit. So yeah, if you want to see a very minor transformation, <laughs> then join me for creating a quilted pocket with these. So I keep this box of fabric scraps for this exact reason. Some of them are bigger than others. I love this, I'm gonna make something out of this, I don't know what. But yeah, I always keep them mostly for quilting and little things like scrunchies. So I'm gonna have a rummage through here and try and find what to match it with. So this is a little scrap piece of the fabric. I want something bold, um, and I'm trying to go outside of my normal autumn tones a little bit. I think I want some blue in here. Normally I'd be like, right, let's go for this and probably this, but I feel like <laughs> everything I do is that. So I'm quite, I love this floral. I'm quite into that. I'm tempted to build that in. I also have this blue, you can see it here as well. I think these two are going quite well together. And then maybe something a bit deeper, picking up the colors of this floral could be this or I do have some red in here somewhere yeah oh I like that I think that's looking nice and bold I think I'll go for these so these are the fabric scraps I've chosen I've got this blue check that I over dyed with a paler blue um, I made a zero waste gather dress out of a couple of years ago now I love this I think it will go really nicely against this natural color linen and then I've got this um, cotton gauze, which I also dyed red, um, which I still have. I've cut the dress out and I have had it cut out for about a year. I'm gonna make a Christmassy dress. Um, it's, it's a Merchant and Mills Florence dress, but I've still got all the scraps from it. Um, so it's gonna be made in something else before the original thing is made. That's fine. So I think even though it's a different fabric, I was I was unsure, but I think the different texture will look great and the colour I love. So there's those two. And then this fabric, which I really adore, it's a cotton I got from eBay. Um, I can't even remember what it was called. So sorry, I'm, I'm not sure where from, just that it was in the ether in eBay somewhere. Um, but it's this lovely floral print. I made an everyday waistcoat by New Craft House out of it. I think it's in one of my videos of my capsule wardrobe and it's just beautiful. I love it. And I think these, I was unsure about the check and the floral together, but I think actually it's going to be quite cool. And I've got enough of the little natural linen scraps that I'm going to put sort of in between. So yeah, I think that's going to be fun. I'm trying to do more piecing in my making lately instead of feeling like I need to buy a whole new 
bit of fabric to make, I mean, I wouldn't do that just for one pocket, but recently I made a Leah bias dress and I didn't have quite enough to cut it out of the fabric I had because it's on the bias, which can often be quite wasteful. So if you don't know what cutting on the bias is, it's where you sort of cut diagonally against the grain and it means you can end up with huge chunks that you don't use. So I thought instead of getting more fabric for it, what I'll do is I'll just piece together the back bit and try really hard to get the gingham <laughs> to line up even though it's on the bias and even if it doesn't match I kind of like that it's part of the process that you can see. So and it worked well I'll show you what it looks like and I'm really happy I did it so it means that I've used up some of the fabric that would otherwise have been wasted or well, not wasted because I would make a scrunchie with it or something but it feels like I'm using up sort of leftover fabric and it meant I could make my pattern and save some money so yeah, I'm, I'm getting more into doing that and trying to normalise piecing <laughs> and it doesn't all have to be absolutely perfect. I also think it's got makes it, you know, have a bit more character. So yeah, I'm looking forward to making this scrappy pocket and celebrating piecing while I do it. <laughs> so the other thing I want to do is normalise crawling around on the floor like a gremlin. Um, I don't have a big table, but I've got a little kitchen table, but it's old and it's bumpy. So I often do my cutting out on the floor, um, which is okay, except it's not great for your back, but it's the less glamorous side. So what I'm doing now is just cutting out. I need eight of these little triangles, I think, to make a sort of Ohio star style uh, quilting patch. And I've got a little mini square that I'm using for the main shape and then I will um, then I cut it up into little triangles. There's much more effective ways to cut quilting bits out but I'm not doing very many so yeah I'm just doing them individually but you can do whole sort of long stretches um, of them that are the right width and then cut them all up at the same time so that they're all the same size and you minimise the amount of cuts you need to do which just makes your life easier but I don't really mind I'm not trying to rush and I'm also I also don't have uh, loads to cut out so I'm just going to keep going like this until I have eight of each of the colours so all cut out and ready to go I'm going to start piecing them together and then I think to get it to the right shape for the pocket, I'll use the leftover scraps, because I've got all of these um, of the linen to go around the edge to make it the right size. And then I'm gonna do a normal sort of quarter inch seam allowance. So these triangles are gonna be pretty small, um, but I think that's all right. I think it'll look quite detailed and cool. So I'm just sewing these pairs of triangles together with a quarter inch seam so that they end up like this. And then you tend to press the, uh, the seam allowance towards the darker side. So what I'm going to do now is just trim off these little ears so that it looks like that, more of a square. And then I'm going to start building out my central square. So, let's get all my little pieces together. This is the bit that I always like to lay out a bit beforehand to make sure that I'm not going mad and I'm going to get it right. <laughs> so this will be my little square. I've laid them out how I'm going to sew them and now I know that I need to place this bit on top of here and this bit on top of here. Otherwise I find I get a bit confused when piecing things together. <laughs> I'm just going to sew a little, well the same seam allowance across the top here. my first one done.
And my second one. So I've got my two halves there that I need now to join together. And as long as my seam allowances were neat enough, then the point should meet in the middle. Not too bad. So that's my central square. Nice. Now I'm going to give all of these a, a bit of a press and tidy that up. And then I'm going to start doing the bit around it in the same way. So here's the progress so far. It's a little bit wonky and I'll need to neaten that up, but that's okay. And I'm just working on doing these longer sides. So for this one, I've done the top above the, the main square, but now I'm going to need to do the corners as well. So I've got this red and blue, which I'm going to use for the corners. And to decide which way round I want it. That could be quite cool. I might do that because then you've got that effect of the red and then the blue. I'll have a play around with it and we'll see. Okay, so I've got my side bits ready. I think it's going to look really cool. Now I just need to neaten up these edges and join them together. After that, I'm going to edge it with the leftover natural linen to make it the shape of the pocket. Okay, I've pressed my square and I've cut out the extra surrounding bits. Um, also adding in a quarter of an inch of a seam allowance on each of the edges. And then it should equal an 18 by 22 square uh, rectangle. <laughs> Here it is, I've given it a good press. Now I'm just going to fold down the edges for the pocket like the pattern asks for and I'm going to position it and pin it on. I really like how these colours look together. I think it's going to look great. Here you go, all pinned, pressed and in place, ready for sewing the top stitching. Just making sure I'm not stitching the trouser underneath. So one line of top stitching is basically edge stitching, just like a millimetre away from the edge of the pocket and the next will be about a quarter inch seam allowance. So whip. It's quite classic top stitching. making sure it's still lying flat. I've put lots of pins everywhere but I don't, especially given the sort of fact it's more bulky, I I don't want it to not be lying flat on the trouser. That's why I'm taking it steady with stopping by all the pins. I'm still yet to connect my presser, my, um, my presser foot, my sewing machine foot and I'm using the start stop button which it's definitely less easy for fiddly stuff like this. I really need, just need to take the two seconds it will probably take to unpack my, my foot and attach it to my machine. But, oh well. <laughs> doesn't help that all my pins are facing different directions but that's because I was trying to mark out the right spot um, for the pocket to go and I was just happy I got it in the right spot. <laughs> I didn't want to move anything. Just making sure it's lying flat. That's my first line done. Now it's time for the next width. I'm just going to keep going around like this. And I've double checked my tension's all good and everything so the top stitch looks nice and neat. Just 
just doing a few back stitches and over the bit where I started just to make sure it's nice and secure especially as pockets get a lot of wear and that's it if I can get it out from underneath all attached I'm going to give it a press and then I'll try it on <laughs>